Hello, my YouTube friend. Guess what? It's a ramen sale haul. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So a few days ago, I did a Simpsons action figure collection video. I was really excited to do that video. It took me a two or three weeks before I was ready to do it because I was busy doing other videos. And I was really excited to get through it because I really wanted the Stephen Hawking figure. And I was really excited to finally you know, get it, put it in my collection. So I did the whole video and I was having a lot of fun and I was really excited. And then by the end of the video, I realized... Where's, you know, I had one Stephen Hawking figure, which I had bought from another person that was kind of a little bit beat up. And I had bought one that was like in mint condition that I bought with the main collection. So by the time I got through all the boxes, I realized I had the one that was a little beat up. But I was missing the mint one and the wind just fell out of my sails. I was just like, where is it? So I went in my store, I asked my wife, I asked my son. I spent like two hours looking for it. I was really demotivated and I realized that someone must have stolen it out of my store because I had them all in boxes in the store. So someone must have looked in the box, saw it, grabbed it, and walked out with it. So that kind of bummed me out. I was just like, I was really upset. I just didn't want to do the video anymore. When something like that it just kind of demotivates me and makes me not want to do videos. And it, you know, it's upsetting. Now, people do steal occasionally from my store. Just being in New York City, that's what happens. You got a lot of people coming through. You have some people that just decide, you know what, I don't want to pay $3 for a DVD. I'm going to steal the disc out of the case. That happens semi often. For a while there, I think it was one guy who was doing it very often. And then finally we kind of caught him. You know, another time someone put a whole Star Wars ship in a bag and tried to walk out. My wife caught him. So it's, you catch some of them, but you don't catch all of them. And I feel like that Stephen Hawking figure left. So I was really sad, but my wife was like, well, you got one. You know, it's not the best condition, but you should be happy with the one. I know it kind of sucks that you lost the other one. So I thought, uh, I was just, I was really sad. So I decided I'm going to take a walk, try to, you know, get the endorphins and kind of relax a little bit. And I walked around the block a few times and then I thought, by my house, there's like a local carnival that happens once a year and they have a rummage sale that happens for the whole time. And this was the last day of the carnival. And I had promised my son we would go on the first wheel and we hadn't done that yet. So I said, you know what? I feel bad, but let's have a fun day. So I went home and I told my wife, I was like, you know what? Let's go to the carnival. And I got my son. And I was like, hey, you want to go to the carnival? He's like, yeah, we're going to ride. So I was kind of sad, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a fun time. I'm going to get over this. You know, after a few hours of kind of being moody and kind of sad and upset about it, we went to the carnival and I said, let's go to the Roman sale first. My wife went the first day with the cool kid. I was sleeping because I had been up all night working, making videos. So I didn't make it to the first day. I was a little bit bummed about that, but my wife bought like a whole bag of My Little Ponies that she we put in the store. So we were selling those. My son got a couple of things he was really excited to get. So for them, it was pretty good, but I thought, you know what, I want to check out the Roman sale as well. You know, it was the last day. I doubt there's anything left because it's been going on for 10 days or 14 days or however long it was going on. I expected to find zero stuff at the sale, but I'm kind of now I'm happy that I had that figure stolen from me. I'm still kind of sad about the figure, but gave me the motivation to go to the sale. And then when I went to the sale, I actually found a lot of really cool stuff. So in this video, I'm going to show you this bag full of records, this stack of GameCube video games, and this giant box of comic books. Okay, so... I went in the Roman sale. So what they were doing is they kind of had like a casino raffle kind of night. It's a charity event for the church there. That's why they have this big festival. So, and then in the back, they had the Roman sale. So you walk through and then on the one side I went, I looked, they had a bunch of ornaments and things that weren't that interesting. But I did see the Star Trek Galileo shuttlecraft. It's like a, you know, you plug it into your Christmas lights and it lights up. And I thought that was really cool. I like Star Trek. I don't think it does anything. I think you have to actually plug it in for the audio to work. But I thought, you know, if they're going to sell for maybe a dollar, I didn't know what the prices are, but usually the prices are really cheap. They would sell it to me for a dollar. I'll take that. So I grabbed that. I looked around. I didn't see anything else. And then I went through the whole middle. So there's like the side with the ornaments and then it comes back out and then there's a whole table where they have all the classware and stuff. And that's where all the people that are running the event are kind of standing with the bags and whatnot. Walked past that, didn't see anything interesting. Then I turned around and the other side was the media area. And that's usually the area I like to look because there's video games. Sometimes comic books. Last year they wanted like $2 a comic book. So I was like, I'm not going to buy comic books for $2. I mean, unless they had a key issue or something, but they didn't have anything. So, you know, I was looking and underneath the table, I saw some comic books. I'm like, oh, comic books. Cool. So I started rummaging through the comic books. You know, I didn't see anything super spectacular, but I saw some Disney comic books and I saw some Ghostbusters comic books. Enough stuff that it was a couple things I sort of wanted and stuff that I know if I put in my shop, I could get like a buck or two. So I basically asked him, I said, how much are the comic books? And she's like, oh, well, we've had them here all week. Uh, and she's like, 
I forget who, you know, hey, Joanne, do we sell any? I'm not sure what the name she said, but she said something like, hey, Joanne, do we sell any comic books this week? And she's like, no. So I said, well, how much do you want for the box? And she's like, oh, you want the whole box? Okay, uh, make me an offer. So I thought, you know, they just told me that they hadn't sold any this week. It's the last night in the last couple hours before they're closing. And so they're going to be stuck with this box. I was like, you know what? I'll just throw out 10 bucks. I said, $10. Because I figured at ten dollars I'd be happy enough as a big box of comic books, even though it's a lot of like cheaper comic books. And so they're like, "Well, we don't know. There maybe there's some collectible ones in there. Uh, gotta be more than that." So they were talking amongst themselves. So like, uh, if you could do twenty dollars, we'll sell it for twenty dollars." So I thought, you know, it's another, it's like a hundred comic books, so twenty cents a piece. It helps the church out. I figured, ah, why not? So twenty dollars. And then I said, "Will you throw that in?" They're like, "Sure." <laughs> so I bought. A box of comic books and uh, Galileo for 20 bucks. So let's look through the comic books. Let's see what was in the box. Okay. Okay. First, I got the Star Trek Galileo ship. It's a Hallmark ornament. And like I said, they threw that in for free. So I was really happy to get that. That's pretty cool. Okay. So this is how the box of comics looked like that were under the table. It was a bunch of comic books in these original, like, sealed mystery packs that are probably overstock so it's not anything too exciting but i don't know everything in here so this is gonna be a fun mystery normally i would keep them sealed if they were actually from marvel or dc but these look like repacks of probably just overstock in the early 90s or mid 90s so i saw a lot of like mickey mouse and a lot of ghostbusters and then some other random stuff so i know like stuff like the cyber force is gonna be worthless or very low value, but then the Little Mermaid, I mean, I could probably get two or three dollars for something like that. So let's start digging through this box. I think this is gonna be fun. Okay, so all these comic books are in these mystery packs, or at least the vast majority of them. So we're going to open up each mystery pack, see what's inside. Hopefully there's like a New Mutants 98 or something. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. And so I don't know how many comics, it's over a hundred, I think. Uh, so I probably paid about 20 cents. So I guess I'll sort them into piles of stuff that I'm gonna have to dump cheap and stuff that's a little bit more interesting that I can put into my store or keep for my collection. Okay, so the first bag, we have the real Ghostbusters. That's cool. Anything that's nostalgic 80s cartoons like Ghostbusters, He-Man and stuff, that stuff sells really well in my store. So I'd probably get like two bucks out of that. That's pretty cool. Uh, Speed Racer, not as many people looking for that, but that's kind of cool too. That might be like a dollar comic book. And I have to research because I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. And, oh, okay. And then a Disney comic book. Disney comic books, I can always get between $1 and $2. People are always looking for that kind of stuff. So, so far, the better stuff is winning out. Okay. And then we have, okay, yeah, Ultraverse. Ultraverse is really not in demand. So, that's weaker. Oh, we got a bunch of those. All right. There's like six of those. Okay. We got another pack to open. Let's open it. That first pack was actually a pretty good selection of stuff. I hope most of them end up being like that then I'll be really happy. The big Slimer comic book. I mean, that's cool. I know I could probably get two to four dollars out of that. If I put that out, because people love the 80s pop culture stuff and it's like a big comic book. So that, okay, another Speed Racer. That's maybe a dollar comic book. Sellable, but not as good as the Slimer. And the last one, okay, another Disney comic book. That's actually kind of cool. That I could definitely get between one and two dollars. All right, another big stack of these mystery bags. So if every bag has a Disney comic book, there might be 30, 40, 50 Disney comics in here. I'm actually really happy with that. They'll give me, I mean, I'll probably end up keeping a bunch of them because I don't think I have them all. But if there's a lot of duplicates, they'll at least give me a lot of cool Disney comic books for the shop. Okay, let's get that out of there. Okay, we have Walt Disney Comics and Stories number 560. That's cool. Again, one to $2, pretty easy. Speed Racer. So it's kind of the same pattern. We've got one Speed Racer, one Disney comic book, and one Ghostbuster comic book in those packs. That's cool. Okay, this pack's different. It looks like a Marvel pack. So we'll open that up. We got Solo, guest starring The Amazing Spider-Man. That's kind of a weaker comic book. We have a Malibu X Mutants comic book. That's kind of weaker and Shadowhawks. Okay, so that's a weak bag. So the, I guess the bags with that kind of stuff are gonna be weak. Quasar 36, Lunatic, first issue, Codeine Strike Force. So there's a whole pile of these. All right, so that's the weak stuff. Rune, Ultra Prime. So again, 
you know, I paid $20. I paid cheap enough for the slot that I don't mind that a big chunk of them is kind of the cheaper stuff. If a big chunk of them is also this Ghostbuster stuff and the Disney stuff. Okay, let's see what we got in here. So we got real Ghostbusters number 22. I bet the middle one's a speed racer. Yep. <laughs> Duplicate. And a... Oh, Little Mermaid. Okay, Little Mermaid. I think these are going to sell for more. Because these came out when the Little Mermaid movie was in the theater. Or right after it, I believe. Uh, 1992. So, like, right after it. So, these are definitely collectible. That might even be as high as $5. I have to double check. It might only be a $2 comic book. But I'm guessing it's worth more. Okay, X Mutant is not the cheap one. Okay, so we got another Slimer pack. I'm guessing this is the same combo. One Disney. One Slimer. One Speed Racer. Which is cool, because a Slimer book, I'm pretty sure I can get $4. Again, Speed Racer is only going to be about a buck. And there's only two comics in that pack. <laughs> Rip off! <laughs> okay, we got another big stack. And the thing is, a lot of these packs were kind of dirty. But the con since they're in the pack, the comics inside are pretty much very fine near mint. So that's kind of cool as well. Alright, we're doing another one of these Marvel ones, which... I don't have high hopes for. New Warriors 52. You can put that in the cheaper pile. We got uh, another X Mutants and a Star Trek Deep Space Nine. That's gonna be a hard sell, but that I'd probably put in the shop for like a buck. Warlord, I mean, that's like a dollar comic. All right, we got a couple of Slimers. These ones are, oh, that one's missing inside. So that's not worth anything. Some more Ultraverse, Foxfire. X Mutants, Super Patriot, a Little Mermaid, but this one looks sun faded. Okay, we got a cheaper pack. I, I think there's gonna be a lot of this cheaper stuff in here. We got Cyber Force 10, Vogue 2. Uh, I'm not even sure what kind of image stuff from that era that I'd want. I mean, this is a cool late Bronze Age comic book, not really worth too much, but for 20 cents, not bad. Okay, this pack, I'm guessing this is another Ghostbuster, Speed Racer, or Disney pack. Which I'm glad there's a little bit of variety in these things, and it's not just the same comics. Okay, so we have a Mickey Mouse Adventure. That's cool. Again, I'd probably get like $1.50, $2 out of that. Speed Racer, Duplicate, and another real Ghostbuster. So that's cool. All right. <laughs> I'm going to open everyone just in case. I'm hoping for one gem to pop out. Okay, so we got the big Slimer book. So I'll probably be selling these for $4, but they'll probably take a decade to sell since there's so many. <laughs> right, only two comics that time. I guess they're counting the Slimer as two comics. Okay. All right, this one looks like three comics. All right. Let's see what we got in here. Okay, we got another Slimer. A, oh, Mary with Children? That's Oh, no, Speed Racer. <laughs> I thought it was Mary with Children for a second. This must be Disney again. All right, Chippendales, Rescue Rangers. That's cool. Well, okay, back to the cheap O Marvel pack. Probably Marvel with Malibu and Image mixed in. All right, we got Nomad. That looks like an Image cover, obviously. Yeah, uh, Swimsuit Special. And, I mean, at least that was Jim Lee Art. And another Star Trek. You know, this one's special since the Jim Lee cover. I might be able to get a dollar out of that. Okay, so far nothing's jumping out. Super awesome, but the slightly better pile is much bigger than the junk pile. Okay, we got another stack. This one is pre-opened. So we have Ghostbusters, Speed Racer, and Nomad. And Nomad again. And Warlock, Sun Faded. These must have been just sitting out somewhere for the longest time. Okay, this is... Oh, this one has a Punisher comic. Okay. Maybe better. Maybe worse. We'll see. Okay, we got Star Trek. And Vogue. <laughs> I'm a junk pile. Uh, Punisher Warzone. That's cool. I mean, I could get a dollar out of that. Dollar fifty, maybe. Okay, more Mickey Mouse. The Disney stuff is really what I wanted the most. Not for myself, but just because... People like Disney stuff, and I'm constantly selling Disney stuff to international visitors that visit New York City. So that's kind of why I wanted this. Okay, we have a Mickey Mouse. That's cool. Uh, Speed Racer again, and Ghostbusters. 
Okay. <laughs> there are going to be a lot of duplicates. I'm going to have to dump some of these. Okay. Uncle Scrooge 274. That's cool. I'd definitely be keeping one of each of these. So that's cool. We have another Speed Racer. Uh, Ghostbusters. More Speed Racer. Cyber Force. Okay. Alright. It's fun to go through a mystery lots like this. I just... I'm not expecting anything really awesome to pop out of these. Okay, so we got a Slimer. That's cool. Speed Racer again. So there's a lot of duplicates. Uh, that's a cool Donald Duck cover. I like that one. Okay, Warlock. Just so sun -dated. And more Slimer. More Rune. Okay. Another pack with Disney. Okay, we got Walt Disney Comics and Stories 522. That's cool. Speed Racer again, Real Ghostbusters, and a Motor Mouth. All right, we got another stack. It's not looking good. <laughs> uh, that's the Slimer body for the cover that was missing. Okay, Chippendales Rescue Rangers, that's cool. These ones that are kind of dirty and damaged, I'll put them out for 50 cents. Someone will buy them for a kid for 50 cents. Star Trek. Okay, let's get these out of here. Okay, it's Deep Space Nine. I'm going to have a thousand of those. Okay, Ultraverse. And New Warriors, annual number one. That's kind of cool. I'll probably get like $1.50 out of that. All right, this Speed Racer is trashed. Another Lunatic. More Slimer. More Cyber Force. So, yeah, there's a lot of kind of weaker, weaker comics in here. Although the slightly better or better stack is doing much better. Although it just it's a lot of duplication. <laughs> okay, what do we got? We got Cyberspace 3000. Oh, a whole stack of the Ghostbusters and the Speed Racer. All right. Okay, this is the last stack. Okay, we got another big pile of Speed Racer. More Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Uh, Warlock, these are kind of beat up. Nightwatch, Alpha Flight 47, that's cool. Might be able to get a dollar out of that. Mr. Miracle, number one, that's cool. Secret Origins, I mean, these are weak dollars. They'll be hard to sell for a dollar, but they're better than this stuff. Okay. X Mutants. All right, one more, all right, one more sealed pack. <laughs> okay. Okay, we got another Ghostbusters 22, another Speed Racer, and another Uncle Scrooge. And these are upside down. So we got Glory, 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 Backlash, Cyber Force. Uh, just a lot of... Oh, Savage Dragon's kind of cool, but not really worth anything. Yeah, just a lot of weaker stuff. Uh, maybe a dollar out of that. So yeah, I wouldn't normally buy a lot like this if it was just this stuff. I wouldn't even pay 10 cents a piece. But because there was a lot of those Disney and Ghostbuster stuff, that's why I kind of bought the lot. So this stack, there's 70. So, you know, if I just figure I paid for that and not this, 20 bucks for 70 comic books, it's not that bad. It's not the best deal because there's nothing that's really super valuable in this stack, but it's still a pretty good deal. And this stuff, I might be able to get like a quarter a piece if I just blow it out in a bulk lot kind of thing. So that's like another $10 I'll get back. So I'm pretty happy with those comic books. That was pretty cool. So after the comic books, my wife found the chair to sit down. She just wanted to sit and I gave her the box to hold because I paid them the $20 for the comic books. And I wanted to look more. I didn't know how much the media was in the years past. It's always $2 an item. So like DVDs, Blu-rays, all that. So I was being very picky. So I was picking through. I found a GameCube game, Cell Damage. I love this game back in the day, and I, it's a cool game. I figured if it's two dollars for that, I'll buy that. They also had three or four other sports titles there with this one, so I, I wasn't gonna buy the sports titles. And I bought a bag of four records. The, the records were for my store. I knew at two bucks a piece, I could probably sell them for five. So I had these five items. I brought them up to the lady and I said, you know, how much are you selling these for? And she said, uh, well, we're selling them for a dollar each or six for five. So I was like, oh, okay. 
six for five. I got five, you know, I got five here. So I went back and I grabbed all the sports titles that go with the cell damage and the other four records because I figured even though sports really aren't worth anything, I could always use the GameCube cases. You know, 87 cents each for the GameCube case. I didn't know these were selling for three to ten dollars now. They're selling for more than they used to. So I was actually really happy I grabbed that. So I paid with cell damage, the sports games and four records. It was six for five dollars. I found 11 items. So I said, you know, I'll just give you the ten dollars. That's fine. So I was really happy with that. Let's go through this stuff and I'll show you what I got. Okay, now let's go through the GameCube games. I got cell damage. And if I remember correctly, everything was complete and the discs were, you know, maybe a few fingerprints, but no major scratching. So that's always good. And I love cell damage. That's a fun game. So, and then I grabbed all the sports titles, mostly just for the cases. But I was looking on price charting and Amazon and whatnot, and they do seem to go for three to, some of them were even 12 bucks, I think. So I guess the GameCube games in general are just going up in demand. So people are paying a bit more for them. NHL 06. So buying these for 87 cents each, I was happy. I'll probably be keeping the vast majority of them because I do want to put together a GameCube collection. I think this one was worth a little bit more. And then we had Blitz 2002. I think this one was also selling for a bit more. So these are really cool. I was actually happy to get those. I wasn't going to buy these, but when I learned they were 87 cents each instead of two bucks, I figured, I mean, normally I used to buy them for the cases, just to have extra cases. But if they're going to sell for more money, I'm going to get them and start adding them to my collection. And then I grabbed four records for my store. Records are one of the main things I sell in my shop. I sell a ton of records. So I'll always grab records if they have cool. They didn't have any cool rock and roll or pop records, but they had some decent folk records. So I got Joan Baez in concert. Uh, Joan Baez has been selling pretty well for me lately. So I'll probably get about seven bucks a piece out of these because the records are in good shape. You know, the covers are a little bit scuffy, but as long as the playing surface is in good shape, I'll buy it. We have Joan Baez, Farewell, Angelina. Uh, Joan Baez, Five. Joan Baez Baptism. So every single one of these records had a good playing surface. I didn't notice any scratches on them. So definitely they might have very light dust scratches, but nothing that really brings the value down. So these are good. So I should be able to get $7, maybe $5 for a couple of them, but these will sell well. So I paid them for that stack of stuff. And then I thought, you know, I might as well go through the records again, because there was records that I knew I could sell my shop for maybe five bucks. It would be a slow sell, but at 87 cents each, I might as well grab them. And so I started looking through all the records and I grabbed a whole pile of them. I think like 25 records. So I was going through those and I was like, you know, I'm buying the pile of records. Let me really carefully go through all the media just to see if there's anything else that I miss. Because the first time I kind of went through it real quick, because usually at $2 a piece, I'm not that excited to buy stuff. But at 87 cents, I'm like, okay, let me see if there's anything that I want for myself or anything I can put in my store or anything of value. And I ended up finding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more GameCube games and three Blu-rays. So I had all the GameCube games and the Blu-rays and the stack of records. I think it was 34 items. So 34, six for five was 25, like $29 or so. So I was just, I was trying to add it up in my head. I was like, well, let's see, we have 30 items, six for five. That's five times five, that's 25 plus four more. We can make it 29. I'm okay, I don't need to do six. I don't know if she knew what I was saying. I wasn't trying to negotiate a cheaper price, but she was like, you know, hey, Joanna, can we do 25 for the stack? You already bought a bunch of stuff. And they're like, yeah, go ahead. So I paid $25 for the stack of video games, Blu-rays and records. I was so happy. You know? So let's go through these games, the Blu-rays and the records. So, and then I went back and I grabbed every record that I thought was halfway decent. I wasn't going to buy them when I thought they were $2, but at 87 cents a piece, I'll definitely grab them. Now, most of these will be in my shop probably for five bucks. And I didn't look this time for scratching because I usually, if I'm paying $2, I inspect the records. If it's under a dollar, I will just grab it as long as the sleeve looks pretty good. And then I'll I'll price accordingly. If it's a little bit scratched up, it might be $3. If it's mint, five, maybe $7. So we have Genesis, Wind and Withering. Genesis is decent, but I have a bunch in the shop already. So that's why I passed them up the first time. The Alan Parsons Project, the turn of a friendly card. The Alan Parsons Project Pyramid. The Alan Parsons Project Eve. Another Genesis, I believe this is self-titled. Yeah, self-titled Genesis. Genesis and then there were three. This one had a lot of water damage. I didn't notice that. But again, I was just the second time around, I was just grabbing. And then we have Genesis Trespass. The Chieftains, they're like a Irish folk band. Uh, they sell pretty well. 
what is that? Bonaparte's Retreat, The Chieftain 7, The Chieftain Celtic Wedding. Oops. So that one, The Chieftains in China. Oh, another Joan Baez in concert. I didn't grab this one because the record was a bit scratched up. So I didn't want to pay $2 for it. But for 87 cents, I'll grab it because I can probably get $3 out of it. And then we have Phil Collins' Face Value, which... Oh, the record's missing. <laughs> I should have looked. The second time around, I was just grabbing. I wasn't even inspecting. So I probably made a couple mistakes like that, but that's okay. Records are tricky. They take a lot more work than other things to sell because it's, you know, you have to take the record out, inspect the condition of the record, and it takes a little bit longer the price and sort them. But I like selling records. It's fun. All right, we have Renaissance Timeline, the Mahavishnu Orchestra, Birds of Fire, the Chieftains 3, the Chieftains 4, the Chieftains 9, the Chieftains 10, and Sunfighter. That's uh, Jefferson Airplane, a few of the members after. So that's a pretty good record. It's in there, okay. We got Renaissance Illusion, Renaissance Ashes Are Burning, Renaissance uh sh I, <laughs> I can't read that one uh traffic last exit jethro tull songs from the wood i like jethro tull they uh they usually sell okay but it might take me two months for each record and they come in faster than two months so usually i avoid these unless i'm sold out but for 87 cents i'm gonna grab that because i know that's a solid five to seven dollars renaissance a song for all seasons and renaissance azur dior so those are cool. That Those are all easy $5 records if they're in good shape. $3 if they're slightly scratched up. Maybe $7 if they're mint or a little bit more collectible. So I was really happy with those records. I was buying those from my store. I figured I might as well make up for the thing that was stolen and maybe upset. <laughs> and then I decided, you know what? I'm going to dig through the media just in case. Maybe I missed something because I thought I, I did a quick scan. I thought I grabbed all the GameCube games and I thought they were all in one spot, but they were mixed around. So I did find other GameCube games. Okay, so we got NHL Hits 2002. Yeah, complete. SSX3, complete. I'm surprised these were here because this is the last day of a 10 day Roman sale. How could these still be here? 007 Nightfire. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That's cool. Streets Volume 2. I think this one's actually going for like 12 bucks right now. I was actually surprised by that. We got Spider-Man for the GameCube. Complete. Everything is in pretty good shape with, you know, this This might have a few fingerprints or minor wear, but for the most part, they're in good shape. Then the, probably the best one was Pikmin 1, which is one of my all-time favorite games. Complete, and the disc is flawless. So I don't remember. I sold my Pikmin years ago for like 40 bucks. I don't remember if I ever replaced it, so if I hadn't, I'm really happy to actually get that and then sell damage. I think those are two of my favorite GameCube games. So, for 87 cents, I'm thrilled to get that. And then I grabbed just a couple of Blu-rays that I'm probably going to put in my shop for 5 bucks. We got Moulin Rouge, that's factory sealed. We got Dreamhouse, which I might watch first before I put it out because I like the actresses and actor in it. And uh, Inviticus, which is Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. I might watch that as well before I sell it. But for 87 cents, I'll grab stuff like that any day and I can enjoy it, I can watch it, and then I can sell it. But that was awesome. I can't believe I got all these GameCube games for that price. All right, so that was a lot of fun. I started out the day with a lot of excitement for, to do a video for you guys. I ended that video just being really depressed and sad and upset because I realized someone had stole something I really wanted from my collection. And that's just like, Argh! but then I you know, went down Roman show and I found a lot of cool stuff. So it ended up being a really awesome day. So that's fun. Sometimes you just have to get, sometimes the motivation to get out of the house and find that treasure has to be something bad. But if you can turn that bad thing into something really awesome, that is awesome. And on the way out from the sale, I grabbed some of these free Avengers comic books with Ready Girl. I don't know if that's worth anything or anything of value, but it does have Miss Marvel on the cover. I love her. So I thought that was cool. It's like a cool promo comic. 
and I grabbed a few of them. <laughs> and my son grabbed one as well. All right, that was a ton of fun. I want to thank my patrons for supporting my channel. With their help, I'm motivated to do more videos more often, and I really appreciate that. Sometimes you just need that little push to get more content made. If you want to support my channel as well, I'll put a link to Patreon right there. If this is the first time watching my videos and you like thrift store hauls, junk store hauls, collection hauls, comic hauls, video game hauls, click the robot's face to subscribe. Why not? I want to make more videos for you. And I'm going to put a couple other junk store, thrift store haul videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!